turn back because she wanted to go back. Come on, somebody. You see, we have got to recognize we must stop, drop, and roll. Here at Monument of Hope, one of our scriptures that we rely on is Proverbs, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 28. And the Bible says that don't you know that all things work together for the good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All things. So we recognize, praise God, that whatever it is that we go through, whatever it is that we experience, whatever it is that happens in our life in the name of Jesus, we have to know that all things work together for the good. Now, what do you mean, Pastor Shaw? I just lost my job, and I'm three, month, three months behind in my mortgage. What do you mean, Pastor Shaw? Uh, I, I was clean and sober, and then all of a sudden I went out there and, and I used again, and, and now I'm using worse than I was before. Uh, what do you mean, Pastor Shaw? I, 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 every time I, I try to think I'm doing right, evil's always present. I'm doing wrong. Well, I stopped by to tell you that the Bible lets us know that there's no one among us righteous. No, not one. Are you righteous? Are you righteous? Are you righteous? You see, we all sin, the Bible says, and fall short of the glory of God. And nobody among us in the name of Jesus is holier than thou. Nobody among us is considered the title Righteous Richard. But what we need to learn and do and realize on today is that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things pass away, and behold, all things become new. So when we look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and that, as we've seen how Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, God gives us instruction to continue to press on to the mark of the high calling of God through Christ Jesus. Some of you have been called to preach the word of God, but you're not doing it. Some of you have been called to teach the word of God, but you're not doing it. Some of you have got a voice out of this world, but you're not doing it in the right capacity of what it's supposed to be done for. Some of you are praise dancers. Some of you are prayer warriors. Some of you are tigers without, but all extreme helpmates to the pastor and, and first lady, deacons, mothers. Everybody has a general purpose and a main reason why you're here. You're not here just to look pretty on Sunday. You're not here just. We have to recognize, praise God, that he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So what happens? What happens when we see in Lot's situation, when she stopped and turned back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So how does this apply to stopping, dropping, and rolling? When we apply this parable to our Christian walk, we have to be able to recognize everybody in here know right and wrong. Everybody been through a little some, some, some been through some far worse than others. Some of you may never even have been around marijuana. Some of you may not have even ever had a wine cooler. Some of you may never even had a curse word proceed out of your mouth or had a negative thought, but something that we do is considered sin if we're not doing what we're called to do by God to do and we choose not to do it. That's a sin. You might be living a perfect life in your eyes, but if you're not doing what God has called for you to do, then that 
considered a sin. Oh, it's not a difficult role. It's not hard being a Christian. Because see, once you become a man, a woman of God, it's not about you anymore. But it's at this point that we need to learn to apply the concept of stopping, dropping, and rolling. You see, the problem that Lot's wife had is that curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Curiosity killed the cat. You see, she turned into a pillar of salt because of that curiosity. How does that apply on today? Say you smoke crack cocaine and you've been clean for three or four years and then out of that curiosity you want to see just what it was like. And there you go. But it's okay. Why is it okay? Because as we said, Romans 8 28, all things work together for the good. And they see to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And the only reason why you're speaking about the word of God and the Lord God himself is because God called you. And if he called you, he, he called you before the foundation of the world. So he knew you and ordained you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. He knew what we would be going through before we even went through it. He knew Lot's wife was going to turn back. But the one thing that he has given us is that free will to choose. What do you choose this day? Do you choose to live or do you choose to die? And by turning back into your old ways, that's making a choice to choose to die. And the only thing that has a free will to give life and death, and that is God. If we choose to smoke cigarettes, we're taking life into our own hands. Once we know that cigarette smoking is hazardous to your health. Once we do crack cocaine, we know we run the chance of getting that bad drug. And our mind's going to be messed up in somehow, shape, or form. And we can't get used by God. That's a sin. And we're not supposed to partake in being God and the worldly sin. And we sit up there. And we perform lewd and lascivious acts that are outside of the word of God. That's sin. And you're headed one way to hell or death. We're trying to take life into our own hand. So what are you doing? What are you doing, saints? You're trying to be God. We have got to humble ourselves. So when we identify when there's a problem that's before us, we all know when there's trouble in the way. We hear that one song, right or right, trouble in my way. Huh? I cry. We know the song. Trouble in my way. So you can see it before it even comes up on you. So when you see it coming, When you see that trouble coming, stop. You see, we're able to stop and identify by the word of God when we recognize what God tells us what not to do by obeying the commandment and obeying the ordinances or what the word of God is telling us to do. So we're able to identify, wait a minute, this don't add up. This ain't right. This don't line up with the word of God. So I'm stopping because I'm not, uh-uh, wait a minute. I'm not going to give in to this, man. I know crack cocaine is wrong. That's not, that's not something used for municipal purposes, something for my health or medication. That's not anything to me, but something that's trying to destroy and kill our people. All our people. That's a devil's drug. It's a chemical. Very addicting. But it's also you can be delivered from. So even with that crack cocaine or however the lifestyle might be, we still have to be able in the name of Jesus to identify that's a problem. Stop. 
See, once you, once you stop and not moving forward, now you can think. See, not on your own accord, because the Bible says the idle mind is a devil's workshop. You see, we got to recognize daily to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow him, Jesus. We have to study the word to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Stop! We have to study the word. We have to get God in prayer. We have to get some quiet time, some alone time. And when we don't do these things, then we fall subject to the enemy's attack. And when it happens, we're not armoring ourselves with the whole armor of God. You see, that's another message that I will bring you in its entirety in the future. But the armor of God, I want to share with you this real quickly, is that everything in the front of that soldier or person is covered from head to toe in the front. But do you know the back's not covered? Why? Because the battle is not won by walking backwards. The battle is won by walking forward. 